real world wildlife seeds dare to compare. One of the things that I do to help increase wildlife and get good pictures on my trail cameras in the summertime is hauling in good clean drinking water. So I've just got a, an old 350 gallon PVC and I haul in on my flatbed trailer here and I use it to fill um, different tubs like that's an old bathtub that I reclaimed uh, from my parents junk pile and I've got it out here next to this beautiful boss buck feeder. So here we are in another location. This is a homemade feeder and I've got just an old uh, black lawn tub that was used for some landscaping and I'm filling that up with water. Um, also gonna put some shelled corn in there and we're going to try to see if we can do some good for the wildlife on this particular property. Get some good trail camera photos, find out how those fawns are being recruited into the herd and find out if there's any other activity going on. Maybe get some pictures of some nice groups of velvet covered bucks. Hello everybody. I want to take you through a couple of different things that you could possibly do to increase the wildlife on your property this summer. One of them is supplemental feeding. A lot of states it's legal to go ahead and feed wildlife even though it's illegal to bait. So there's a big difference. Talk to your local conservation officer, your Department of National Resources, or your game fishing parks to find out to make sure that it is legal if you would like to do this. Um, it is legal where I'm at in this particular state on this particular property. So I've set up three different feeders and we're going to take you to take a look at all three of those and see some of the differences. This product that I've got here is a 1200 pound boss buck gravity type feeder. Um, I've got it filled with shelled corn as, I, as you can see and you can also put in different types of pellets and minerals and things like that were legal as well. Um, it is very heavy duty construction and there's no damage to it that I can see. It's been out this year and it's done a great job for the wildlife. I've got a camera looking over it and uh, over here I've also got an old bathtub where I've got some water, nice clean drinking water for the deer and other wildlife and I should have a lot of pictures and I can see you know all the deer that are coming in. Take a look at the Boss Buck feeder line. It's a wonderful product. I really enjoyed this one. It's very well constructed. It's a heavy duty model and with this 1200 pound model I'm only going to have to fill it once for the whole summer and on a property that I have to drive several hours to come and manage and look over, that's a big deal to me. Um, here is a water pond that I had dug several years ago. I'm just uh, putting in a couple hundred more gallons of water just to dump the water in a good useful spot. I put some bentonite in the bottom of it so it's holding water. I'm just going to empty my last couple hundred gallons that I brought in to fill up some of the tubs. This pond draws wildlife all summer. I was uh, showing you a couple things about uh, feeders and about some of the things that you can do to help your wildlife in the summertime. This is one of the other feeders I've got. I've had this one the longest, so um, keep that in mind. I've had this one about eight years. This one is from on time. I think this is uh, holds about 200 pounds of shelled corn, if I remember correctly. Um, it's showing a lot of wear and tear, but it still gets the job done, and it's and it's fairly inexpensive. I think this one was about $150 at the time. But the one thing I do want to point out, when you're talking about feeders that are made out of just like PVC or or uh, something less like a like a real light plastic like this is, this is the original one. The first year the squirrels chewed out the top and they got right into it so I had to cover it up with boards and rocks and some different things like that and as you can tell the top rusted right off so I used that to set on top and then the new one that I bought from them the squirrels chewed into that as well so I've got to keep a, a pretty good lid on the top of it um, it's an economical model it's a pretty good model it, it works for us but when it only holds a couple hundred pounds um, you have to refill it quite often if you have any kind of a herd density at all. So that's why I really like the larger one. This is a good feeder, but as you can see, a lot of wear and tear, and then the squirrels found the way in. So think about that when you're looking to choose which feeder you might want. Okay, this is uh, the third commercial feeder that I've got on the place. And this one is made out of, I don't know, some kind of a metal like 
tin or aluminum, something like that. This has also been out here six or seven years. It served its purpose pretty well, but again, it's a very small feeder. Um, you can use this for shelled corn, which I do, or you can also use it for pellets by um, screwing it up and down a little bit. The, the thing that, that I don't like about this feeder is, once again, it's very small, so just a few deer will you know, consume all of the feed in this in, in about a week's time. So if you're living away from your property or something like that, or, or uh, you know, if you just don't want to fill it that often, you might consider something larger. It's done its job very well, but it's, it's, it's very lightweight and, you know, bent, bends very easily and has fallen down quite a bit. And uh, as you can see, the top has seen better days. It's not necessarily a, a great design to, to keep it all together. So we'll, I just usually pop it up on the top and either put a screw inside or pile a bunch of rocks on top of it. But this is another type of feeder that you can use. Again, very small, very lightweight, very economical compared to one like that boss buck over there, it's just nothing really even compares when you're talking about the, the durability, uh, the construction, and of course the capacity. But it's, you know, it's all how much you want to spend and what you want to do. We've gone through a couple of the different feeders we've got on the place here. This is the brand new high capacity 1200 pound boss buck, a uh, non-typical feeder. It's very well made, well constructed. I showed you a couple of the other feeders we got on here that have worked very well, but they're a lot smaller and they're not as uh, sturdily built. So we've seen the squirrels have eaten right through the top of them on the metal ones. Some of the, you know, the legs have been broken and cracked and things like that. And it's really hard to do the top. This has a really secure feature, holds 1200 pounds, very well constructed. Uh, it's out of Texas. It's a great company. Give them a look. Is I like to put out shelled corn after the season when it's legal to do so, no more hunting. And then we can get pictures of the bucks and, and do a buck to doe ratio postseason. Then a few months later, we find out, okay, when have the bucks shed? When the majority of the bucks shed is when we want to go do the shed hunting so we don't have to continue to push the deer over and over and over again. So that when people, when we, my friends and I, we go out and shed hunt, we can find some bone. Have access to property and you want to do something to help the wildlife in your area. This not only helps deer, it helps all the wildlife. So, and it's a great fun, it's a great activity for the summertime. So. Think about doing something to help the wildlife in your area. And anytime when you're outdoors, please always remember, respect the land, respect the landowner, and respect the wildlife. Thanks.